Hello everyone, this is Kivox. In this video I'd like to present you my main tank Dragon Knight build for the trials in the Deadlands patch and I hope you like this and before we start give a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends and comment below what you think. Let's just go. There are some flex spots in the build itself and I will also of course walk you through all of them and but before everything else we will go into the character and attributes food, class, race, not the class but the race itself. So uh, on the attribute points we do have 64 into health and we have 41.2k health with 19.9k maximum magic alongside with 1.150 magic recovery and 24.8k stamina on the back bar of course on the front we have 25.9k stamina and 20k maxa magica and yeah some good resistances as well 23.5k spell and physical resistance uh, this is quite cool and our Etrona is the our Mandestone is the Etrona to get the magical recovery by 310 and this will give us some um, space to recover stuff and also we are Nord so as a Nord you get a maximum health, frost resistance, maximum stamina and when you get damage you get ultimate and physical and spell resistance as well so this makes Nord the best possible uh, race choice for uh, tanking and um, in here in the sortable as you can see we do have a uh, tri-stat foods or you can also use bewitched sugar sugul as well this is also a very beautiful food and about the potion we have max health max magica and max stamina with uh, all of them recovery tri-stat portions basically and on the next one we will go into the inventory and see the setup itself actually and I will try to explain everything in here so on the front bar we have infused um, master perfected axe and shield it doesn't matter what kind of weapon you do have it could be dagger sword or mace whatever it doesn't matter um, this drops from um, Dragon Star Veteran and it gives you spell and physical resistances when you do a puncture on the enemy. Basically, you taunt and you get health and you get resistance and you get healing like uh, over over time and it scales with your maximum health. That's why we do have 64 into attributes into health. So, front bar enchantment is uh, reduce the target weapon and spell damage by 217 for 5 seconds. And on the shield, we have we do have sturdy with a uh, tri stat glyph on it, and this is also quite cool. And on the back bar, we have a uh, ice stuff of the powerful assault with the charged and frost damage to proc basically brittle on the enemy it is completely um depends on the group of course what you are going to do depends on the group but um my guild is need that brittle because we remove some champion points etc so uh someone have to use the brittle and proc that thing so this is the basic the best way to do it with the charged stuff and powerful assault when you use assault ability while in combat you and up to five more people within 10 meters gain 300 weapon and spell damage for 10 seconds so just to proc it i have a vigor a coin vigor so it is proking that thing you get some other stuff too but that doesn't matter as a second set um well before we go into the second set i will go into that thing actually 
Uh, on the jewelry, I also complete the powerful assault thing right here. Um, I'm currently, I was currently testing it out. What is the best and all? I did try out the cost of block, magical recovery with the robust, infused, blah blah, and um, I do believe um, the best one that you can do with your jewelry is the infused and reduce the cost of block all right and then it really doesn't cost you anything at all and when you block in the bot bars on the sword and shield bar or on the ice stuff it doesn't cost you literally any resource and you don't have any resource with that setup so that's the trait that you gotta do it infused and reduce the cost of block enchantment on all three jewelry. As a second set, right now, perfected Yolna Queen, chest, and uh, waist, hands, leg, and the feet. All of them, as you can see, is sturdy, and um, all of them is with Hakejo Glyph on it, Tristat enchant, so you get the most out of it. This set, when you taunt an enemy, you give yourself an 11 group people, basically the whole trial group. For 15 seconds, you increase their weapon and spell damage by 215 for, every se uh, for 8 seconds. So this is quite cool. You get a little bit less damage, blah blah. And um, this is the important part right now, because this is the flex spot of your build. All right, so either uh, you can do um, some kind of uh, one piece monster head that gives you something that you think personally that you need. All right, and um, I, I pick blood spawn just it gives me stamina recovery because, well. Um, I'm using the stone giant and it costs me a lot and when I go into the back bar and block it basically gives me a little bit stun recovery and uh, well if we look at that if you block as you know you don't regenerate stamina but if you are on your back bar you can regen stamina and this is quite kind of cool thing as I said this is complete the personal item what you can do so just pick it up, stun recovery piece, or like a, what can I say, like magical recovery item, or earth core healing taken, like, or maximum health, lady torn, yeah, you name it, okay, there, there is tons of, tons of things, you can get max health, max magicka, domi house from the fall crate and all this is completely up to you but the second thing the shoulder is the mythic from the deadlands DLC and when you basically crouch it will activate um, some kind of aura like this wait where is it yeah, like this, and you will give a uh, weapon and spell damage to your allies, up to 6 people. But it will also reduce your health, magic and stun recovery by 70 for every ally that's getting benefit from your Hour of Pride. So this also got gotta be sturdy, and uh, basically try stat glyph on it, but I'm using it on different characters, I just can't be asked to do more with the transmute because i don't have much as you can see 39 and spaldor of ruin is quite cool if you don't know how to get it i have a guide for it i will drop it down in the link in the description down below and you can also find it on the top right corner of the screen apart from those sets you can um also use uh where is that Black Drake Villa and Curtis. Okay. When you deal flame damage to an enemy, you will proc some kind of aura for everyone. And it will 
uh, increase basically flame damage of your team that deals to the enemy and also reduce the flame damage taken for everyone. This is also a choice and Kurt is uh, most favorite tank set right now and consider using it according to your trial guild. But my setup is completely like that because I'm most of the time needing it so I'm, I'm playing like that for quite some time. And those are the sets and those are the alternate sets that you also could do. And the next, the skills, the most important thing is the skills. As you can guess, we need uh, all those passives like that and uh, well, if you are ru ru running Spalder of Ruin, you also need those, of course, get some more stuff. Medium heavy armor passives, fighter skilled if you need, Sigic, Undaunted obviously. North and alchemy, alchemy medical use as well and some other stuff like destruction stuff one on a shield especially the destruction stuff you will want to get try focus all right this heavily uh dependent skill like because when you block with the ice stuff it will cost magic so you can basically um Block unlimited with the balance and all. So you need like you are low on magicka, you still blocking, but you can do balance and your teammates can heal you, and you are full because your block doesn't cost anything. All right, as you can see, it is just 698, and it doesn't cost anything at all. Imagine with three, uh, basically three of those infused and reduce the cost of block but I also like magic recovery but this is the best that you can do and apart from the passives right now on the front bar we have stone giant to debuff the boss basically you will want to keep it up the whole time unless you are suffering a lot okay yeah the stone giant is quite a uh, situational like when the team is dropping the necro, dropping the warhorn and all etc on the boss and you will want to use the stone giant at those moments most of the time because it costs too much stamina, keep in mind. And the ignition shield, it gives you a major mending for 3 seconds, basically you do it before you heal yourself with anything like dragon blood or the echoing vigor etc and give you and your teammates a little bit damage shield dragon blood green dragon blood is kind of a oh shit moment to heal yourself if you feel like you are dying so you can heal and the defensive stance is um, basically you are not using it but it is there to get uh, the benefit, as you can see on the third paragraph, it says when you have a shield equipped, the amount of damage you can block is increased by 10% and the cost of blocking is reduced by 10% as well. And the pierce armor, it is here just to get the aggro of the enemy and procure master sword and shield and break the resistances of the boss. And as an ultimate, you can either use Barrier or the Magma Shell. I do like Magma Shell more, especially in Rock Grove. Um, I like it when you tank the Barbarians, Butchers, etc. This is Magma Shell is very useful. And it's kind of making you immortal for 12 seconds. So, yeah. And on the back bar, we have Balance from the Mage's Guild. You sacrifice your health and you get a uh, magicka in return and blockade of frost to proc the enchant and brittle on the enemy and it also gives a little bit shield as you can see but the shield doesn't matter much so uh, if we go in here and drop it down you can see people got the shields around them right now like that and um, the third skill echoing vigor 
it gives a 9.2k health over 10 seconds of course you prefer ignitious shield and then you can see 11 point under 60 health over 10 seconds it is here just to proc powerful assault as well otherwise you don't need that skill at all and the chain it just uh, pull the enemies near you and um, it is also changes from trial to trial and it also uh, deals flame damage so you will not have any problem proking the Ancrates if you are running Ancrates by the way and yeah you get a little bit speed blah blah and our range taunt skill is in a rage um, it is same as pierce armor basically you just don't get the uh, how to say you don't break the enemy's uh, resistances so you still need to do the pierce armor after you pull them with the inner rage it is just there if the enemy is away from you or something like that and as an ultimate we have aggressive horn it increases uh, max magic and max stamina for the group by 10 percent for 30 seconds and also increase the crit damage by 20 percent for 10 seconds for 12 people in the trials so those are the skills basically my my character is looking some away okay those are the skills basically and we will go into the champion points now the green is completely situational whatever you like to do you just put them all however you want and on the blue one um the ones that you gotta assign is the unassailable reduce your damage taken from uh aoe attacks by 10 percent the second one is under increase all reduce your damage taken by damage over time attacks on you by 10 percent dualist rebuff reduce your damage taken by single target attacks for 10 percent and the last one while you have a shield or frost staff equipped your spell and physical resistance is increased by 1900 this is quite cool and um i don't think you need anything else something like that and also you can get some other stuff here max stamina max magica or some gear blast blah blah as long as you have the cp but those four of the four of them that you gotta have it and extras go just away from somewhere wherever you can put them all like here here blah blah and on the red one this is the important place right now you don't get boundless vitality you don't get fortified you don't need those all right keep in mind you don't need those so we go into survivors spite right here the first one is a pain refugee reduce your damage taken by two percent for every two negative effects active on you up to a maximum of 20 percent reduced damage most of the time you get some kind of negative effect on you because you are a tank and you have a lot of debuff on you as well while having them you get less damage and um the second one let's say the second one is the on guard while under the effects of cc increase the amount of damage you can block by 10 percent so when you block you basically uh block mitigation more by 10 percent this is quite cool and if we go into that uh walking fortress which is me <laughs> god um you have a wardmaster here reduce your damage taken by 10 percent while blocking and under the effects of a damage shield which means when you block and you have a shield on you that cp that champion point is working so keep in mind you keep your ignis shield 
up the whole time. And if we go in there again, we have Bracing Anchor. While in combat, increase the amount of damage you can block by uh, 20%, but reduce your movement speed by 16% at all stages. So there is another 20% more uh, less damage to be exact and uh, you gotta be in combat. When you are in the combat you basically take little to no damage. So if you combine all of those buffs and all from the champion point you are literally as the champion point says you are the walking fortress man. Congrats! You kinda hardly gonna die even if you want to. You you can't die easily. What the fuck is this thing? Damn the shopper, you look ugly with those oh Alright. You basically the welcome fortress with those things and all. And apart from it, um when you you may think that why we don't have the fortified in here in here and um basically if we go and stop dodging me man oh it doesn't work on that thing oh all right all right i need some kind of an enemy to do it and if we taunt that guy right here and of course get that thing up all right i'll just wait a little one more second and then count that thing if you can see we are above the cap of it 36.6k resistances which is crazy crazy above average like you literally above the cap and the uh, cap is um, 33k and yeah that's basically simply it okay you can die now those are the things you can hardly die just so you know that um, playing as a tank is quite hard job and big responsibility to do it to do it and it will come over time as you play through the character and you will of course get it and experience with the different skills engulfing flames if your team don't have the engulfing you of course have to run engulfing flames or like the talents for example it's completely situational or the deep breaths etc to interrupt as an aoe and um what do we have more yeah some elemental drain like in vcr hard mode you need to elemental drain the crystals for helping a little bit more for the teammates and uh if you are up to it time freeze and deep thought from the psychic order is also important for for my content if you are up to it but this is a completely a trial setup right now you can replace some skills with the altar if your team not running the altar because team has to run altar etc and sometimes you gotta need perch and the mystic guards like in vhof art mode for example you gotta you'd need those two in the vhof art mode you need perch on the first boss you need mystic guard on the last boss something like that and yeah those are the things that I could um, basically uh, tell you and this is quite good setup that I'm currently running with I'm very happy and if you know me I'm playing tank for five years by now alongside with other classes of course like DPS and healers too and yeah I hope you enjoyed this video and that's set you right over there and if you like the video click like if you are not subscribed this is the great time to do so so click subscribe and check out our merchandise shop just below in the description we have a new shorts and many many products that you may enjoy 
and grab yourself for Christmas. Thanks for watching the video. See you guys on the next one. Take care of yourself. Bye bye.